Okay, so now it's time to talk about birds. And as usual, I'm going to introduce birds by taking you to a bunch of different places in the world, starting with my cabin and going to Galapagos and Trinidad and Argentina and California, among other places. And introducing some of the concepts and interesting features about birds that we'll discuss and develop further on in the lecture in relation to adaptation to extreme environments. So let's get started. As I was weed eating, I found the nest of a dark eyed junco. And then that afforded the opportunity to first of all stop weed eating, but second, to be able to sit down, set up a bunch of cameras, and watch as uh, the mother and the father would come and feed the babies with insects primarily. So these are all trichial birds, that is, they take a long time to develop in the nest. And during that time, the parents look after them. Circle of life. Waxwing might be a, a, a good guess based on the color, the feathers. You can see the secondary feathers here. Here are the primary feathers on the wings. Here's some down. And yep. Somebody had a good dinner off of that. Another bird we frequently see at our cabin is the merganser. This is a common merganser. These guys are fish predators and they go around in little flotillas like this up to large numbers of mergansers. And they dive uh, both individually and as groups to hunt small fish. In the old days, they used to actually have a bounty on these birds. So if you killed them and brought in their feet or beak or something, then you could get money paid for that because they were presumed to have this really negative impact on the local salmon populations, which people care about more. And they do eat lots of salmon, but of course it's uh, not a good idea to mess up the balance of nature like that and kill a bunch of uh, top predators, which play an important role in the ecosystem. So that's clearly not the case anymore. Now, not that far from my cabin is another place I want to take you to, and that's Haida Gwaii. It's only 700 kilometers away, and it's right off the coast of uh, British Columbia. Now, while I was there, I was able to observe a lot of different behavior of particular birds. And let's start with the common loons. Loons tend to be present only one or two on a given lake, where they forage by diving after fish. But on Haida Gwaii, you tend to have these large collections of loons that were likely failed breeders in other parts of the range that then congregate there in order to forage on stickleback fishes. In this particular video, you see the loons going around and during this time they will uh, catch and kill many, many stickleback fish and other fishes that are found in these lakes. And then every once in a while they will get startled and everybody will dive as you're seeing here. I also uh, spent some time looking at some of the land birds while I was there, and this is a killdeer. And I was watching it having this very strange behavior when out popped a baby that it had been uh, protecting by hiding underneath it. So this is a very small killdeer baby, and it is now running off one way, and the mom is sitting there still cheeping, so I was wondering what was going on with that. You can probably guess what's coming. Voila! Second one. So I like to think the mom here was torn between following the baby one way and what to do with the other baby that was underneath it at that point in time. Also, uh, in Haida Gwaii, I was able to watch a lot of eagles that were trying to um, fight, essentially, over a salmon carcass that had washed up on shore. And so you can see that there's one eagle that's trying to steal it, and then eventually, because of another eagle, it grabs it and is able to fly off. So. The eagles tend to be scavengers. Now, not that far from both Haida Gwaii and my cabin in other part of coastal British Columbia, uh, I have a video that my brother took where he was able to um, feed barred owls. And so here you see an owl coming in to essentially a bait that my brother has provided. 
What that bait is, is mice that had been killed in the fishing lodge where he was working overnight, and then they would basically go out and feed them to the barred owls by using a fishing rod and their hand, and the barred owls would take uh, them right out of their hand. There's so many cool observations of birds from around the world that I next have to take you to Trinidad. And so here we're moving down. Um, I flew my drone straight up out of the forest, and so now we're going back down into the forest uh, because I want to show you something that's really cool on the forest floor of uh, Trinidad and other places in uh, the Neotropics. So if you go and you walk along in the forest, you might hear these cool snapping sounds around you. And so when that occurs, you can go up and sit very quietly and watch mannequins displaying. Male mannequins get together on what's called a lek. That is a bunch of males that are uh, displaying to females and they clear a little patch. You can see the patch below the vertical stick in the middle and the mannequin is jumping back and forth and as it does so you can hear a snapping sound that it produces with its wings as well as a buzzing sound when it slides up the branch. There's a female there and the male and they have this choreographed display where the male jumps back and forth, slides up the branch, makes these sounds and displays to the female in hopes of obtaining a mate. Well, I've talked to you about Galapagos before, in the, particularly in the first lecture, and I want to bring you back here by um, talking a little bit more about the birds of the Galapagos. I've already talked to you about how some Darwin's finches will forage by cracking seeds, and in this I want to tell you about some more diverse animals, including the Galapagos penguin. So yes, Galapagos uh, has penguins. Penguins can be found north of the equator, in fact, only just barely. And so here's a penguin that I was just able to observe over a dock, off a dock by holding down my GoPro underwater and watching the penguin zoom by, essentially flying underwater. Now this video here, you see something zooming down over the, uh, the rays that are in the water and startling them all away. And as we pop up above the surface, you see that it's a pelican. Here's some more pelicans foraging. They're not diving down in this case, but they're just sort of lunging their beaks in. This video I took in Florida. And so you're starting to see a large diversity of different types of beak sizes and shapes and forms that are dictated by what the particular birds are doing. Now I gotta take you to another uh, neotropical place. Uh, and this is Argentina. These are the famous Iguazu Falls on the border between Brazil and Argentina. My graduate student does research just a bit south of there, and she studies howler monkeys and their microbiomes as they're mediated by the defensive compounds of plants. Right out back behind the place we were staying, someone spotted this really cool bird. It's a potu. And look at that. All of a sudden, it's like, I'm a branch. I'm a stump of a branch. So here's another look at one. He senses I'm there, and then he's like, you can't see me. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Also in Argentina, I saw another uh, bird that I'm sure you guys all know, which is the vultures, of course. And here they are uh, feeding on a dead cow. Vultures are very good at wolfing down, so to speak, uh, lots and lots of food, including rotten food, but they have trouble getting into the carcasses. So here you can see them uh, tugging on. You can see the whole carcass moving of the cow, but it's really hard for the vultures to really get going until the hard external, rough external skin is broken and the vultures can get inside. Finally, I'd like to take you to uh, my family's vineyard in California, which I've spoken to you about before. And the reason why I want to take you here is because we can talk about fruit eaters. So outside the house where I was staying on the vineyard was a persimmon tree. And I spent a lot of time taking videos of this persimmon tree at a time when there's really no fruits left elsewhere in the vineyard. But the persimmons last a long time. And so many, many birds came to these persimmon trees including bluebirds, which you see here, robins, sparrows, many different species of sparrows, uh, yellow-rumped warblers, uh, waxwings, these are cedar waxwings, and hummingbirds of various species. So during certain times when you have lots of resources available and there aren't other types of resources available, but one is very common, then you will see lots of birds that go to it.
And also, uh, I want to take the opportunity to mention migratory birds. So if you go around uh, in the farmer's fields in the fall in Quebec, you'll see huge numbers of geese. They can be Canada geese, but also uh, snow geese. So those snow geese are on their way down south, and some of them end up in California. So this is the uh, Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge. And finally, the view of a cavity nesting swallow that had a nest right beside my brother's house where it would go out, catch insects on the fly, take them back into the nest, feed the young, then pick up the waste of the young, fly out and drop the waste off outside of the nest. Oh, the chaos. I'm trying to finish this lecture for you and the power goes out. So now everything has to be run by the generator. So check it out. We got the, the generator. Everything for the rest of this lecture will be done by generator, by candlelight, to the sound of our actual real piano. So that was last year. Um, this year, while revising and updating and improving all of this, we had a power outage again. So it's something about my bird lectures, I think. But I made it through.